Bonjour, incredible people! Today, let's dive into the brand new MetaHuman features and also the Maya plugin that opens the door to even more advanced customization. We'll break everything down together with a with a complete workflow full of practical tips. So let's go! So Mr. Incredible is always here to help, so I brought him along with us today. The workflow I want to explore starts with the custom scope, made in Blender, ZBrush or any scripting tool you prefer. After sculpting the high-res mesh, I also created simple textures in Substance Painter to streamline the next steps in MetaHuman identity. Of course, you could start with other sources like a photogrammetry scan from your database or even an existing MetaHuman. But here, I wanted to showcase a slightly stylus workflow that works really well with all the new features available to us. Before moving forward, make sure MetaHuman Creator Core Data is enabled in your engine installation settings. You'll need this to properly run the new MetaHuman Creator, so double check this step. Alright, now let's jump into Unreal to create a MetaHuman identity and explore the new MetaHuman Creator. Be sure to have all the necessary plugins enabled for the full MetaHuman experience in the editor. After a quick restart, you should see the MetaHuman section when right-clicking in the content browser. First, we select the MetaHuman identity to map our initial sculpt onto a MetaHuman head rig. I imported my sculpt as a merged FBX file including both eyes and the head, with the quick texture I created in Substance Painter. The workflow here hasn't changed much from older versions. Start by creating a new component from your mesh. Then adjust the camera settings in view to get a flat, front-facing view. This makes it much easier to place guides accurately. Once you're happy, promote this frame, and you can also promote additional frames for side views or guide adjustments. After clicking Track Markers, all active markers are placed corresponding to your mesh and texture. This is the first step of customization. Take your time to move and adjust the guides as needed. Precision here will affect your final result. Once satisfied, hit MetaHuman Identity Solve to run the solver and generate the MetaHuman face rig. Don't hesitate to go back and tweak guides as needed. In the markers panel, you can add or deactivate guides to influence the final results. Also, toggling data-driven eyes on or off can make a big difference in eye placement. Finally, click Auto Rig MetaHuman Identity to finalize your customized face rig. All right, let's jump into what's new in Unreal Engine 5.6. In the content browser, go to the MetaHuman section and create a new MetaHuman character asset. From here, we can further adjust everything, from the head to the body, using lots of the new super cool features. We now have a brand new editor window that brings together everything you could previously do on the MetaHuman website, plus some awesome new tools. No need to leave the engine or wait for the website to load. Everything is right here, which is amazing. On the left-hand side, you'll see all the main tools, from presets to the final assembly. Most of them are intuitive, but let me walk you through my workflow. Let's start with the head using the Conform tool. This gives us three options, DNA templates or identity. Since we've already created our MetaHuman identity assets, we'll reference that. You can pick the identity option here, it's handy sometimes, but for custom highs, teeth, and scale, it's often better to start from the original template. And just like that, Mr. Incredible is here with us. It's not perfect yet, but don't worry, we'll tweak it. Next, you can add textures through the Materials tab. It's very intuitive. Pick your color, add details, and explore different parameters. Everything is parametric, so it's really fun to play with. You can then move on to eyes, teeth, and more. After that, return to the head and use the Sculpt tool to refine your creation. It's somewhat limited in movements, but gives you a lot of flexibility to adjust the final look. Pay special attention to the global delta and head scale. These are key for adjusting your mesh relative to the template. The global delta helps fix projection and surface mapping issue from your original sculpt. Honestly, with patience, you can fine-tune almost everything right here. Next, let's adjust the body. Just like the head, you have three options. Blend between available templates, conform to an existing DNF file or template, or customize everything from scratch, which is what we'll do. These parametric settings are incredibly powerful. They give you control that wasn't possible before, so big shout out to the MetaHuman team for this amazing work. Everything is flexible. You can go back to adjust the head, body, or other parameters at any time. You can also save your assets and return later for more tweaks, though it can take a while to perfect everything. You also have control over shading, lighting, camera, and scalability settings directly in this editor. Finally, you can add hair, eyebrows, and eyelashes by double-clicking the asset. 
For Mr. Incredible, I went with a short swept up hairstyle. It fits his style perfectly. You can also create custom hair in Maya or Blender, and the new Houdini plugin for groom creation has even more advanced possibilities. It's a bit more complex, but the MetaHuman team provides extensive documentation covering everything from start to finish. I've included the link in the description as always. Let's adjust the color and overall parameters we've set up on our incredible buddy. You can also add a beard, peach furs, or even a basic outfit. And the best part? Even with clothes added, you can continue adjusting the body. Parametric cloth will adapt automatically. That's really cool. Once all customization is complete, it's time to create the full rig from the top menu. This maps the skeleton and rig logic onto your mesh. Keep in mind, once the rig is applied, the main settings are locked. If you want to make changes afterward, you can unrig your MetaHuman using the button here to go back and trick anything. The final step is to assemble everything. You can choose the type of assembly you want, optimize for Unreal or for DCC tools like Maya if you plan to do further adjustments. Here we're doing both, one export for Unreal and another one for Maya. First, pick your desired texture resolution, then hit Assemble. Now in the content browser, you will see your MetaHuman blueprints. You can drag it into your scene and start interacting with it immediately. You can animate it using Control Rig for both body and face, or bring it into MetaHuman Lightning, a MetaHuman animator from footage like I showed in my previous video. With all these tools, you have full flexibility to create and integrate MetaHumans in the engine. This opens so many possibilities for you, including creating and even selling your own characters. The MetaHuman ecosystem is expanding. People like Matt from the Cinematography Database are already creating amazing assets like cloth, high heels, and earrings that are fully adjustable for your MetaHumans. A new era is here. That's the really exciting and important new stuff for us. Now that we've got everything set up, it's time to explore the Maya MetaHuman plugin in detail and see how far we can push customization. As I mentioned, in addition to everything we've explored, we can now tweak our MetaHuman in depth like never before. First, in Maya, make sure the plugin is activated. I've included the installation process in the description for you. Let's start with the character assembler. Choose the folder where you exported the MetaHuman from the character creator in Unreal. You can import the entire character or just the head, it's up to you. Next, let's focus on the expression editor. Make sure to select the DNA file that was exported along with your DCC MetaHuman. There are three main options here. Neutral pose, edit the base pose giving great flexibility and full access to Maya sculpting tools for detailed adjustments. Skin weights, fine tune the skinning across the character with advanced tools like mirroring, giving you precise control over deformation. And then expression poses, edit all the plane shapes for facial animation. If we take neutral pose, we see all meshes that are part of the character along with their LODs. To edit anything in this section, you always need to assemble first. For example, here I assembled LOD 0 and LOD 1 to illustrate the next steps. The scene is now updated. You can hide LOD meshes you don't need and focus solely on the surface geometry. I'm offsetting the LOD 1 head mesh here to demonstrate something interesting. Don't hesitate to hide the joint layers as well, so we can focus on sculpting the surface. Now you can adjust anything you could not in the character creator in Unreal. Use the sculpt tools or any plugin you prefer to refine your geometry. I'm focusing on LOD 0, but you can make minor tweaks or extreme modifications. There's plenty of room to work. Once you're done, update the vertices position to match the existing rig precisely using the Update Vertices button. This affects LOD0 only. For interest, the first button in the panel is for scan mesh reprojection, letting you reproject a high-res scan onto your sculpt to preserve details without manual sculpting. I ran a quick test by reimporting a high-res ZBrush mesh, and the result was excellent. Combining this with manual sculpting is incredibly powerful. The second button updates rig joints, mainly useful if you modify the body mesh during the process. Finally, the last button allows you to save the new DNA file, which pushes all modifications across all LODs. The proper workflow is update vertices, then save DNA. That's really cool. Back in the MetaHuman Expression Editor, we have skin weight editing. The workflow is similar, select the LOD, assemble the scene and make adjustments. Currently, edits are LOD specific, as you'll need to tweak each LOD manually if needed. 
you can check the weight assignment and fix asymmetries by using the symmetrize function. This is super handy for precise control and fine tuning. Lastly, let's explore the expression poses editor. When you've selected it, the first step is the same as before. You need to assemble your scene. After assembling, you get a new scene layout and your face board should work. If it doesn't, like it happened to me at first, it might be due to a specific Maya plugin. This usually affects 3D connection hardware users. Simply unload the plugin and reopen Maya and everything should work. Back in the expression poses tab, you'll see a fairly intimidating graph filled with nodes. Don't panic, it's manageable. The key thing to notice is that when you select a node, it will display the blend shapes in bold and its upstream and downstream dependencies. This is incredibly useful to see all the combinations needed for a specific pose. There's also a bookmark button to help manage the graph. You can display a smaller subset of nodes for specific poses or create your own custom bookmark. While kicking a node gives you additional options like locking, changing color, or highlighting, which makes navigating complex graphs much easier. To edit a pose, either click the edit button at the top of the UI or double click the node you want. You then see all the blend shapes involved in that pose with adjustable values for precise control. Once you've selected the pose, you can sculpt or push vertices to achieve your desired results. Make sure to have head group selected when editing blend shapes and the corresponding mesh. This process works for fixes, fine tuning or full adjustment. There's a lot of advanced functionality here as well. I've included links in the description to the official documentation and the latest Melhuman team talk, which dives deep into this plugin. When you're done, exit edit mode and save a new DNA file. You can reuse it directly in the MetaHuman character assets without complex exporting. To apply the new DNA file, you need to remove the rig from your character first. Then re-import the head using the DNA file saved in Maya. You can uncheck import whole rig if you want to readjust settings in the editor. After reassembling, the updated mesh will propagate to your level and all sequences using it. No additional manual adjustments needed. Don't hesitate to jump back and forth between Maya and Unwell to test which controls trigger specific blend shapes, for example. This helps ensure everything is working correctly and gives you full confidence in your setup. And we are done for today, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments. As usual, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. It's always really important. See you next week for a new one. Ciao.